by over the years because he lives. Praise the Lord. Let's take some prayer requests. We'll take uh, yours tonight if you have any spoken requests. Jimmy. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's remember these families. Manio and Haley, they've had the crud, but they're climbing out of it now. I believe just about everybody's either had it or having it or coming out of it. It's really making its making its way around. Plus co colds and flu, and um, I believe Brother David said uh, Wanda had uh, uh, some congestion. Uh, going on with with her lungs and all, so uh, let's remember them. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. All right. Anyone else? Y'all remember a friend of mine by the name of Shannon Prince? I got a, a text from his wife Beverly that uh, he's not doing well and. Uh, uh, running some tests on him on his pancreas. So I'm praying for my buddy Shannon. And not yet. No, I don't, well, I'm, I hadn't read them through, but nonetheless, yes, let's remember um, Pastor Eric Sellers and uh, his wife Shannon. I'm assuming the rest of the family's okay. Well, yeah. Let's pray for. Pray for them. Okay, let's read these right quick. Uh, if I can get them brought up. <clears throat> All right. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Ruth Brown, please pray for Miss Faye. She'll be moved to, to uh, Bel, Bel Air tomorrow. Um, Mary Hampton, the loss, my family, all that has requested prayers on their prayer chain. Harold Hooper, pray for the lost souls, and I have an unspoken uh, Jean Campbell, please pray for my family and lost loved ones. Um, I, Angela Rankin uh, asked for prayer for Brother Randy Richardson. He pastors at God Can uh, Baptist Church. He has COVID. Um, uh, Joanne Myers, Trooper John Horton's family and unspoken. Elaine Williams, unspoken. Uh, Pam Purser, pray for lost souls, the hurting, the sick. And a praise report from Meemaw, she's recovering wonderfully. And uh, my sister went from 12 hours to live to no longer needing hospice. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Lisa Smith, our country, several unspoken. My pastor, his wife, Jenny, and his family, Chad Lingerfelt, the lost family. Joyce Gibby, unspoken. Uh, Susan, Suzanne Duncan, Mark and I are really sick, remember us. Anthony Iuma, please pray for my mother for healing. Roger Cozort, health issues. 
uh, Brother Jamie and Teresa, Bob and Kyla Rowland, uh, Teresa, Grayson, uh, Wilmoth, remember Miss Jenny. I don't know a whole lot about what's going on. I think she may have had some surgery or something. I don't know if Brother Sid knows anything about that, but we are praying for Miss Jenny. Matthew Mays, pray for our nation. Uh, Joel Treadwell, please pray for uh, my wife uh, uh, for healing and for both of us. Virginia Davis, have some dear friends in my church and other dear friends fighting the COVID virus needs prayer. Uh, Sister Rosalind Bell, uh, ask prayer for herself. Gene Alley, preacher Gene, asking for prayer for wisdom for him and um, his wife. Uh, Sally Hughes, all of our church families and unspoken. Risa Owen, unspoken. Uh, Patricia Heiss, mom, that's Willa Davis. Uh, she's got surgery coming up. She's going to have a filter installed to remove blood clots uh, and prevent uh, blood clots. Ricky Purnell, open doors for souls to be saved. Martha Clemens, prayers for my son's healing uh, in body and soul. Uh, Terry Ziegler, preacher, and Shannon, and our church. Uh, Wanda McCall, this is David's wife, Xavier, is seeing a heart doctor Friday for rapid heart rate, even when he's resting. It's been going on for several weeks. Um, he's got a lot of other issues going on. Also, Xavier's dad is going through some things and needs a touch from the Lord. Um, her Aunt Shirley passed away, remember the family. And she, uh, Wanda said, also continue to pray for me. Uh, I'm having a lot of trouble holding food down. Uh, so we're, we're praying for Wanda. And uh, God's got all of that. Uh, Pastor Ballou uh, praying. Uh, Kathy Poteet Wilson, Jenny Grayson, Sean Wilson, Martha Taylor, unspoken. Don and Belinda Herbert praying for your service tonight and everyone there. Uh, Bill and Jackie Geithner, Amos, Allison, me, our church family, my work family. Uh, David McCall, the Lord knows my heart and needs. Pray for me and my family, please. I love you all. Linda Phillips, pray for all of us, our families. Donna Griffin Phillips, my husband. Renee McDonald, pray for everyone suffering from cancer. Debbie Ramsey, unspoken, praying for all the sick. Uh, T.J. Phillips, pray for a dear friend of mine, the family just getting over COVID, well as my grandmother as she uh, recovers from surgery. Uh, my uncle Tony, who is battling cancer. Um, Sharon Womack, uh, please continue to pray. So there they are on social media. Lots, lots of needs, lots of prayers, and I'm sure. Alicia, you got any prayer requests? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, wow. That's great. God just keeps on throwing blessings at you, don't he? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Bill? Right. There's so much going on right now in people's lives that there's no way to remember it all. It's just, it's just tremendous. Everyone has just got loads and loads of needs. Um, uh, Brother Mike, praying for you, to your recovery and things you've got ahead of you. And uh, uh, the Lord knows. And, and, and think about uh, Martin, Erlene, Haley, and Luke. And uh, think about uh, Michael and just... Uh, think about uh, Sarah and uh, just so many needs that we have. <clears throat> but God's up to it. He's up to it. He's up to the task. He certainly is. 
Any other? Any other? Anyone else? Preacher Jamie, would you pray for us tonight? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for for your mercy and your grace. And Lord, your touch, Lord, that you would give. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord, for what, Lord, we need you so bad in this time and in this day. Lord, I, I love you tonight, Lord, and I, I sincerely, Lord, ask you, Lord, in the name of, of your son, Jesus, Heavenly Father, that you would intervene, Lord, on behalf of all of these needs. Lord, the needs are great. The needs are many. Lord, I pray, Lord, that, uh, Lord, that you would just do a work, Lord, in these lives, do a work in these hearts, Lord, do a work, Lord, that, that a man can't do, that doctors can't do, that... Um, those that look in the mind, they can't do it. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, because we know that you can. And Lord, bless those, uh, by the way, of social media, all of those requests, Lord, and even the some that may be watching the service right now. Lord, I pray that the sweet Holy Spirit of God, the sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, your spirit, Lord, that your nature, Lord, and your glory, Lord, and your power, Lord, will just permeate, Lord, these lives, permeate our home. Lord, I pray, Lord, for my friend Shannon uh, Prince, Lord, and uh, just a lifelong friend, Lord, I pray, Lord, that he would have a healing touch, Lord, on his body. Lord, you know that uh, all of the needs, Lord, physically that we have, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we ask you for healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, give us, Lord, that that we cannot get for ourselves. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Good work to you. Yes. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord. We love you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, just rain down on us. Lord, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we do. We need you so much, Father. We need you. We need you. Oh, we need you. Every hour that we need you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Honey, you going to come sing? Uh, yes. Alonzo, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I thought about Miss Patsy while we was praying. Is she doing oh, She's doing good? Good, good. Uh, I know uh, Brother Al uh, Alonzo, most of you know him. Uh, he's having some issues with his heart. I didn't realize that he has had a history 
uh, of heart disease, had several bypasses, several stents, just a lot going on there, and uh, he's been having to take some medication. Uh, and Miss Lawanda, you know, she's she's got health problems also, so we'll continue to pray for them. Good evening. I know some of us feel like we've been um, tired and we're weary and we don't know quite what's going on. And um, but um, I always think uh, Hebrews chapter eleven and those great warriors of faith. And it says in that chapter that there are some that we are not even worthy to speak about. And it tells you things that they have suffered, that they suffered. It says some were, some were burned, some were sawn asunder, some were sawn in half. That's what that means. They were cut up. We know what the emperor emperors of Rome did to them and they continued on we have to continue on we have to continue on that is what God would have us to do and if you're weary if you're burdened tonight come to the altar Come to the altar and lay those burdens down. From wherever you've been, come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burden. broken lift up your face oh wanderer come home you're not too far so lay down your hurt lay down your heart come as you are Come taste his grace, there's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken. No sorrow 
know that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. unlocking the doors and coming in as God meets with his people. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Thank the Lord for that sweet spirit I felt through that song. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, turn with me for a few moments in the book of Ephesians chapter number 3. Ephesians chapter number 3. I want to speak to you, I want to, I want to read verses 16 down through 21. And I want to speak to our hearts on the subject tonight that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love. And may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge listen to this that ye might be filled with all of the fullness of God now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this time, Lord, that we've gathered here once again, Lord, to look into your word, your perfect word. Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for talking with us through the book. Thank you for speaking to us, Lord, in times like these. Lord, not only, Lord, in prayer and through the Spirit, but Lord, also through the written word. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, I pray, Lord, tonight that someone, Lord, uh, that we all here would be blessed and encouraged, Lord, to continue on this journey. Lord, as you, as you grant us according to the riches of your glory. Thank you so much, Lord, for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. This letter uh, addressed to the Ephesians was the first of what uh, has been coined or called as the prison epistles. Some of these letters, these letters that are written to the church was written from a jail cell. Imagine that. Sometimes God has to get us in those types of places before he can speak to us. And some of us right now are going some, through some things in our life right now uh, through, though it may it be sickness or whatever the case, but it forces us, it forces us to throw ourselves upon the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And when we throw ourselves on him, and we, we approach him and with no other strength, when we approach him with no other power, he is able to speak to us, and he's able to do, do in us and through us, uh, as the scripture says, that the far, far above what we would ever think. But Paul penned this letter around 62 A.D., again, as I said, from a prison cell at Rome. And Paul had spent... I was doing some refreshing concerning the, the letter to Ephesus. And Paul had spent about three years in the Ephesian metropolis. And many believe that Paul had this letter, this particular letter, circulated throughout all of Asia Minor, along with Colossians and Philemon. And they did not limit this letter to the Ephesian church only. As a matter of fact, some say that it, it was not named to the Ephesians I, that for whatever that's worth. But it was given to all of the churches. And some said even to the church at Laodicea, this letter was sent. All of the churches in that region. And I guess I said that to say this. Whatever God gives to one, he gives to all. If he, if he, sent, if he did send this letter to Ephesus, uh, uh, solely to Ephesus, it was not meant for just them only. It was meant for all of God's people. It was meant for the church, which is the body of Christ. And in this section here of Scripture, um, one, if not one of the most powerful prayers of intercession for the church and for the believer that I believe in the sacred text, um, the person and work of the Holy Spirit where we are here seems to be the theme in Paul's conversation with God concerning the church at Ephesus. And the power of the Holy Spirit, who is God, seems to be Paul's chief request that the Holy Spirit would manifest himself in the church, in the time, in whatever, whatever they were going through. Uh, some of you that's read, I'm sure there's some here that's knows more about the, the state of Ephesus at that time more than I do, but I understand it was a very, very worldly place, a lot of persecution that was going on there, a lot of pagan gods, a lot of rituals, a lot of uh, worship, and uh, very, very, I guess to put it mildly, very, very bad things that was going on in this chief port called Ephesus during that time, but there was a little church there. There was a church there, and they were serving God. And even though the Ephesus was big, and the commerce was big, and the worship of the false gods was big, still there was a big God right in, am in amongst those little people. A big God with the power of God that was permeating through their hearts and through their minds. The moving and operation of the Holy Spirit uh, in the body of Christ, uh, I would say today, uh, is almost in some cases non-existent. Uh, the, 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 the Holy Spirit cannot move in a lot of cases because of where we have placed our faith. We have placed our faith in everything but the right place and the right object. The scripture is replete and we can prove it through the sacred text that the Holy Spirit works within the confines of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want the Holy Ghost of God moving in your life, if you want the Holy Ghost of God moving in your situation, whether it be for healing, whether it be for finances, whatever the case may be, when we start placing our faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work, the Holy Spirit has free reign to come and work in our lives. I've seen it, I've seen it happen. I've experienced it in my own life. I stopped putting my faith in everything else, everyone else, every other denomination, every this and every other that, and I started placing my faith solely in Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary's cross. And hey, the, the Spirit of God, he'll move. He'll move. And because of misunderstanding and because of misappropriation, the church needs the moving and operation of the Holy Spirit. Now, notice as the prayer proceeds here, and as just for the sake of conversation, we're catching this prayer about midriff. This prayer, uh, Paul is praying this prayer off and on, as as even starting from chapter number one. But verse sixteen says that he would grant you according to the riches 
of his glory. Paul is asking here on behalf of this little church, he's asking for access. He's asking for access to God's glory. Paul is asking access to God's wealth of glory, the riches of wealth of God's glory. Let me get your attention a minute. The riches or the wealth or the power of God's glory is not limited by the shallowness of our belief. Just because we don't believe nothing is going to happen, just because we don't think that he'll do what he used to do, that's irrelevant to how large he is. That's irrelevant to the riches of his glory. It is irrelevant. The riches of his grace is not diminished by the narrowness of our understanding. Just because and none of us will ever truly fully understand and, and fully be able to, uh, to, the Bible speaks of it as the unsearchable riches of his grace. And that's what man's good at. He's figured it out. And by professing himself to be wise, he becomes a fool. And God cannot work, God don't work around a fool. Especially when a fool has figured it out that he's got it or she's got it all figured out. They've got it all figured out in their intellect. They know what's up. They know what's going on. They know that we're this and we're that. And they know that we're just doing this and we're just doing that. And here you are. You all wrapped up in the same mess the rest of us are. And you trying to tell us how to get out and you can't get out yourself. God is still rich in his grace. It's not diminished by the narrowness of my understanding. It's not diminished by my denominational bend, by my intellect. It's not d diminished by my psychological barriers and even satanic boundaries. The riches of God's grace and the riches of his glory. Imagine Brother Moses. Moses said, show me thy glory imagine that when we place our faith in Christ and his work I want to say it again to you tonight when we place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work the glory gate opens it opens that we have access to it matter of fact with grace comes glory praise the Lord speaking of our Lord the Lord the, 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 the Apostle Paul said this we read it all the time Romans chapter 5 verse 2 by whom also the Lord Jesus we have access by faith into this grace wherewith we stand and rejoice in hope of the what of the glory of God praise the Lord now notice what he says next and this really jumped out at me y'all as what we're going through man we're taking it it's it, it's it's no I, I'm not one of those that the, these confession people that, that says if you confess it, you bring it, you bring it on yourself. In other words, people say, don't, don't say you're sick. If you say you're sick, you'll get sick. No, I'm sick. I'm sick. And, and, and I've got things going on in my life. And, and all of the exterior that's going on right now with all of this COVID and, and the discouragement and all of this th stuff that's going on with our government right now and just all of the things, that the family problems that we have and all of, the, all of these things, it affects the outward. The outward somehow penetrates and affects the inward. And it works on you. It works on you. It works on your mind. It works on your heart. It works on your soul. It works on your spirit. Your spirit will find itself down in the bottom, down in a hole. But Paul said, hey, look, I'm asking God to open the glory gate. I'm asking God to open up the glory gate so you can be strengthened in the inner man, so that we can be strengthened with might. Hallelujah. May I say it again? To be strengthened with might. Notice this prayer. To be strengthened. Listen. Paul's asking them to be strengthened 
with the power of his might on the inner man. Well, Paul, with the understanding and the discernment of the Holy Spirit, was he was saying, hey, these folks need some help. These folks are weak. These folks, they have their faith. They're going on for God, but they need a touch from on high. They need something, hey, that this world can't give. Praise the name of the Lord. To be strengthened with might. Think about that. Paul said that they may be strengthened, that they would become strong. Remember in the Old Testament of the Old Testament saints that would follow David in the battle, the Bible said that they would wax valiant in battle. They wax valiant in battle because they were renewed. They were renewed day by day. Though the outward man would perish, they would be renewed day by day. Listen, there's enough glory. Hallelujah. There's enough glory that God has no matter what we're dealing with in our life, no matter what's going, there's a glory enough to go around to help us to go one more day. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to say it again with grace comes glory. May I say it one more time, devil? With grace comes glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord that they would wax valiant in battle, that they would run and not faint, that they would mount up with wings as eagles. He would go on in chapter 6 of this very book and he would say, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He would go on to say that. You know, This word, strengthened with might, this word might here, many of us that have studied over the years, we understand that this word might here in the Greek is dunamis or dynamis or dynamo, where we get our English word dynamo or dynamite. I, I, I'm going to tell you what, uh, as I was, the, it, it, this carries the idea of literally being infused with the power of God. You think about that, literally being infused with, with the power of God. And I wrote this down in my notes, and the Lord brought it to my mind, so it must have been true. Uh, the Lord said, most of, my, the most of your spiritual life, you've been a spiritual firecracker. A pop every once in a while. I don't want to be no firecracker. I want to be a powder keg. I want to be a powder keg for God's grace and God's glory and God's call. He's been good to us, church. It don't matter about this COVID. He's been good to us. If he takes us all out tonight, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory. How good it would be to be present with the Lord, to be absent from the body. Praise the Lord. Notice what he said. He said that he would grant you according to the riches of glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Why don't you look at that little phrase right quick. By his spirit. By his spirit. Now I want you to notice if you've got your Bible in front of you, that's a capital S. There's a capital S there for spirit. That means God. The spirit of God. The spirit of God by his spirit that we would be strengthened with might by his spirit. If you're going to make it, if you're going to make it, it's going to be by his spirit. It's going to be by his spirit via our faith in Jesus Christ and his finished work. If we're we're going to maintain our sanity, and glory to God, ain't you glad that God takes you a day at a time? Sometimes you feel like I'm just not going to make it today. It's all over. Shut it down. Forget it. I'm just done. I'm through. And glory to God, I wake up the next morning, my eyes pop wide open, and there's God. He's still right by my side. He had not went anywhere, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It's because of his spirit, strengthened with power by his spirit, strengthened with might by his spirit on the inner man. Praise the Lord. 
Paul said it again. We mentioned it in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. He renews us day by day. Day by day, he gives us what we need. You know, he, 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 can't, you, he can't dump it on us all at once. We can't take it. And if he did dump it on us all at once, we never would go back. We never would. We never would give him the credit. We'd take it all. We'd glob it all up in our stinking pride and go on and do this and live our life and never even look to God. And God says, I've got to, I've got to keep you on the reins. I've got to keep the reins on you because you've got to look to me. I'm the author and finisher of your faith. I'm the one that started it. I'm the Alpha Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the first and the last. It is in me that you live and have your being. By me you consist. Praise the Lord. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. He says for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding in eternal weight of glory. We says that, the, that when, and we're going on, verse 17, it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. <clears throat> I want you to look at this real close. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. In this one little sentence, some of you still trying to catch the message of the cross. Here's a good one to look at. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. The Greek scholar Weiss says it this way, that the Christ might finally settle down and feel completely at home in your heart through faith. May I say it again? He didn't say that Christ. He said that the Christ. That the Christ. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's not you do your thing, I'll do mine. You do this religion. We're just going to stack you up. We're going to put you on the shelf with Buddha, Allah, and all. Oh, no, you ain't. Oh, you, I serve a true God. I serve a resurrected Lord. My, hey, listen, your, your God's probably still in a graveyard. Buddha's still in the grave. He's still in a tomb. But my Lord, hallelujah, because the sin debt had been paid, my Lord raised him from the dead. And he's ever seated at the right hand of the Father. I don't serve a dead God. You might. Confucius is dead. enough of that that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that the Christ might finally settle down Christ has to have an atmosphere to work in our lives that he feels at home he, 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 he wants to feel at home in our life he don't want to feel like an intruder. He wants to finally set up residence that Christ may dwell. Dwell, not visit, not check in once in a while, but to dwell, to dwell in the inner man that I can be renewed every day that I can get what I need from him on a daily basis. Just as the manna rained from heaven, I don't stack up the manna from yesterday, it'll rot. But I know that he'll provide for me day by day and everything that he has for me is new. His mercies is fresh, his tender love, his tender touch is new and fresh every morning. When he can set up Residence. There's a whole lot of preaching here. A whole lot. That ye be let me hurry, that ye being that ye that ye being rooted and grounded in love. This love here is agape love. 
This is not phileo love, earthly love. It's not brotherly love. It's that you can be rooted and grounded in the, kind of, in the God kind of love that no matter what comes your way. The Bible says there's no fear in love. That's agape love. It's God love. It's God love. It's the love that is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost because of our trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can say, man, it's too simple. What you're saying, you, you act like God's going to start doing all this and doing all that just because I placed my faith in Jesus and what he did on that wooden beam. That's it. That's it. That's where the riches of his glory comes from. That he give his life as a ransom. He give his, he give his life so that everything that he had could be given to you and I. That the riches of his grace could be opened up. That's what, let me ask you one little quick question. What else can you do? What else do you think you can do? Do you think some way you can be good enough to plow your way toward Calvary? Do you think for one instance that you or I or anyone else could climb up the place of a skull and look at that and even place ourselves beside, beside it in any way, shape, or form? Do you think that because I'm better than him, I'm better than her, I don't do what he does? Listen, listen, you're putting your faith in a pipe dream. It don't work, work that way. There's only one righteous one. One righteous one. There is none good. No, not one. Only one that I can put my faith in. And it's Jesus Christ and his work. And that's what I want to do. I want to be rooted in that. I want to be grounded in that. If that isn't love, as the song says, if that isn't love, the ocean is dry. If that isn't love, there's not a star in the sky. If that isn't love, you're looking for somewhere to camp out with your faith, camp out with Jesus, what he did at Calvary. There'll never be an event. There'll never be another event that'll take you where you need to be in your life outside of the finished work of Christ. And it was ratified. You say, well, how do you know it done so much good? Well, it done so much good, God raised him from the dead. What's, what's crazy about it is that through his love and his mercy and his grace, that when I place my faith, it's crazy. When I, and I, pardon me for the vernacular, but when I, I place my faith in Jesus Brother Jimmy, and his finished work, in God's eyes, in God's eyes, he's who matters, okay? He's the one that matters. It's not, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters what he says and matters what he thinks. So when I place my faith in him, his finished work, according to God, I am placed into his death I am placed into his burial. I am placed into his tomb. And then I am raised to newness of life. That's where the spirit of God that renews us every day in the inner man comes from. That's how you'll make it. That's how you're going to make it. That's how you're going to make it. That's the only way, you, that's the only way we're going to make it in, these, in this day that we live. It is, no, it is no secret. It is no secret that we're living in a slot in history. That's unlike, you, you're here in this part in history. We're here in this part in history and God is looking for some people. God's looking for some people that will be rooted and, be ground, and to become grounded. And uh, I'll say this quickly. You can't, you, you, you got to make sure where your roots, what your roots are reaching for. You got to make sure that your roots are not reaching for the wrong thing. Your roots has got to stretch toward Christ and what He's done. And then when you, when when our when our faith, when the roots of our faith start reaching out, the cross will lock on to them. The finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we will be like that tree that is planted by the water. We will be like that house that is built upon a rock that when the storm comes and the wind blows, we won't be like the one built on the sand and great is the fall of it. We'll be, we're going to make it. May, 
may be able, verse 18 and 19, 20 and 21, I'll end it right here, may be able, and Paul's praying, that we may be able to comprehend, or it means to grasp, or, or even to lay hold of, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. And to know, to know, to know, to know, hallelujah. To know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. Here it comes again, that ye might be filled with all of the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. There it is again. Wait a minute. Let's don't run off and leave it just, lay it just yet. According to the power that worketh in us. If you don't believe him, he can't work in your life. God will not work and give anyone the benefits of the atonement in the area of unbelief. You got to make up your mind. You got to make up your mind. I think I think there's enough I think there's enough of grace of God down in down in the heart. You know there's something to it. We may act like a nut, and I may spit and slobber and these other preachers, but you know deep down there's something to it. There's something to this Jesus, and he he wouldn't he, he man couldn't have come up with this concoction, man couldn't have come up with this scheme, man couldn't have come up with this fairy tale, man wouldn't have wrote it if he could have, and wouldn't have if he couldn't have if he would have. He couldn't have done it. That you might be filled with the fullness of God according to the power that worketh in us. Lord, I pray that our church would grab a hold of this. And he would end it unto him. Be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Let me give you a little Bible lesson right quick. It says, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Anytime you see by Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, of Christ Jesus, through Christ, all of these, anytime you see those phrases throughout the, the New Testament, it's speaking not only of the person, but the work. It's speaking in the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say this in ending. Jesus could have come to the come to this earth. He could have healed all of these people. He could have walked on the water. He could have raised Lazarus from the dead. He could have done all those things and even lived a perfect spotless life, which he did. But if he had not went to the cross, the glory gate stays shut. If he had not went and give himself as a payment for your sin and mine, there would still be enmity between you and me and God. But since he went to the cross, the enmity is gone. We are no longer strangers. We are fellow citizens of the commonwealth of Israel. We are a peculiar people. We are a kingdom of priests. We are a kingdom of sons and daughters of God. We have access. We have access to anything the Father has. Through Christ Jesus. By Christ Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for Lord, just being able to look at this. Lord, thank you for your, your grace, your mercy, and your power. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you would give us, Lord, the power, Lord, that we need to be able, Lord, to navigate, Lord, through these times, these times that we don't understand, these times that uh, Satan tries to lie to us and, and tries to, to mess with our mind. Lord, I pray, Lord, it, it just seems like, Lord, whenever we see you, 
whenever we see you, Lord, things seem to get right. Th everything seems to be all right when we focus upon you and our focus and, our, and, and the object, Lord, of our, of our faith and our hearts turn towards you and what you've done. Same, things seem to get right in our lives and in our hearts. Lord, may we remember that. And may we apply that to our lives and our hearts, Lord, through faith, faith in you and what you've done. Lord, if there's one listening tonight, <coughs> Lord, that does not know you, Lord, as, as Savior, that has, not, that has not surrendered their life to you, Lord, I pray, Lord, that inside, inside that they would make a decision. Maybe somebody's listening by social media. Maybe somebody's maybe even sitting here tonight. Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would make a decision to follow you and trust you and to become that bond slave to you, Lord, that your word speaks about. Lord, help us. Lord, again, Lord, we pray for those that are sick, those that are discouraged, those that uh, have a tremendous amount of load on them. Lord, uh, whether it be financially, whether it be a sickness, Lord, whether it be a death in the family, whatever it is, Lord, I pray, I pray that the glory of God, the glory of would shine on this family, Lord, and whoever they are, whoever this person may be. Lord, we love you and thank you, Lord. Bring us back again, Lord, this Sunday with the help of, with your help, ready to worship you once again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you all so much for your patience. Tell somebody you love them. You're dismissed.